important. Tchotchkes. But he looks, I mean, that's a great sleeveless shirt. I'd still put up as Kurt Russell's best sleeveless shirt. I want to know why in 1988 the crime rate increased by 400% to yeah. fivefold the original crime rate in just that year. It's impressive. You're going to have to read the book, Mark, and let us know. Yeah, I should have done the novelization. I'll let you all down. I think here's what it is. I don't have it. I don't got it. Maybe an economic collapse, <laughs> and then that led to mass unemployment, and then a new drug called Jingle Jangle. Oh, yeah. Like this, a RoboCop. Like yeah. a RoboCop movie. There it is. Yep. Exactly. Everything. Jingle uh, Jangle. That's from Riverdale. <laughs> from Riverdale. That's, that's a TV show called Riverdale. <laughs> there was a drug called Jingle Jangle in there? Yeah, it's so ridiculous. What's the other one? Something Rocks? Uh, fizzy Rocks. Yeah, there you go. Riverdale for an actual candy. <laughs> so weren't they? Oh, Pop Rocks. Never mind. Riverdale's like a bunch of twenty-five-year-old scantily clad kids <laughs> running around. People get murdered and people become cults and then they forget about. They, there's plot lines that are dropped entirely. I, I bet you the writers just drink nothing but Serial Red Bull killers and, and just scream at each other in a room. <laughs> my my next question. I want to know <laughs> Sorry. your opinion. How, what proportion of incoming prisoners getting onboarded elect to be cremated on premises in lieu of going to, to New York? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so, all right. So, John, are we led to believe that you get dropped off at a certain point and then there's food that comes in every month? So they get fed in the beginning of every month, correct? Is that what right, we're assuming? Then, right. And then mm. because at, at the end of the month, the, the, the people turn ravenous. Yeah. They become Guy Pierce. I feel like they just literally drop them. Oh! Yeah, they just kerplunk them on the ground? Yeah, it didn't look like there was a door in that wall anywhere. Yeah. They had to climb out. Do you think they take them by boat or helicopter? I think they do an airdrop. Airdrop? Yeah, they have to. Safer. Now, are all the prisoners dropped off there or just the most violent? All of them. How else would they get in? Yeah. So they take every prisoner from the States and dump them in there? Oh, yeah. no. I think it's just, it's just yeah, very violent people. The I snake think. They catapult them. Oh, my gosh, John. Trebuchet. They treb them in. They trebuchet them in, and they if they survive, right the then they get to live in New York. Yeah, why not? Uh, there's a big launch. There's a big pile of mattresses that you can land on. Why would there be mattresses? It's a prison. They just launch them and let it happen. And see what happens? Survival of the baddest. Well, you I mean, wanna... realistically, you know what you do? You just trebuchet and launch them into the river, <laughs> and if they start to swim <laughs> back away from the island, you shoot them, and instead they swim back towards the island, and they become prisoners. You do that too. I like that. That's practical. But John, that, I mean, that, that's like that's like the real world. That's like if if Donald Trump made the decision. You're you're Jacksonville, John. All right, John. <laughs> oh, because Bruce Campbell and all his mania. Aww. Yeah, you're you're yeah exactly from Evil Dead. You're Jacksonville, John, and you got offered a job in this dystopian future to where they said. Hey, Jacksonville John, we know about you in Jacksonville. You do a lot of trebucheting. We want you to trebuchet people into New York. Would you take the job? I mean, if it's a tough economy, absolutely. And even if not, I get to trebuchet people? Uh, I think so. <laughs> yeah, so the novelization claims that the police are super brutal and corrupt. And what happens to Fresno Bob in the world, according to the novel, is that he is flayed alive and Snake has Whoa. to watch. So I, if, I, if I was propositioned to trebuchet people, I would probably do it. Yeah. I wouldn't, fl I wouldn't be the flay guy. I don't want to be flayed alive. Oh. I wouldn't be but Florida. But imagine that's the consequence if you say no. Brooklyn Bobby Flay. You say no, we drop you in New York. Yeah, you get trebucheted by Jacksonville John. Mm -hmm. So, John, would you run one trebuchet or three? I mean, I, I, first I want to master my craft with one, but eventually I think I'd like to. I'd like to think I could handle three. Would you take an apprentice? Well, I mean, you have to. That's yeah. your legacy. You need. You need to pass that skill. And then when they're when they're apprenticing someone else, that new that someone else is like, man, you are so good at this, and they'll be like, no, man, I learned from Master John, <laughs> Jacksonville John, <laughs> Jacksonville John, Master Jackson, God Emperor Jacksonville John of the Trebuchet Kingdom. Would you take bribes to, sh like, so, oh, man, this guy's a jerk. I'm going to shoot him into a building. Or, hey, this guy seems kind of nice. He might have been framed. I'll shoot him into a nice, cushy, bushy area. Like, could, would cushy, you have, bushy. Would you, would you have that much control of your trebuchets, and would you take bribes? I never knew cushy and bushy could be, put, could be alliterated like that. Uh, so I guess I'd take advantage of that option just by virtue of saying those two words back to back. <laughs> I like this, John. You got cushy. a good... Cushy bushy. Cushy bushy. Speaking of cushy. <laughs> speaking of cushy. The first scene that we have 
on the grounds of uh, of Manhattan Island, all I could think of was what kind of hair products do they have there? Yo, man. I mean, whatever you can raid. Romero. What's Romero using? Uh, poop. Well, he's using. Well, well, I remember something that I used to use called like a ice spiker. Whoa. Remember when I had the the, the sharp spiky hair that I occasionally colored? I got back six in, like, stitches my, from that. But <laughs> but but then but you see it's not just him because Adrian Barbeau's hair. Oh, yeah. Is always immaculate. Yes. Right? Always. So, so there, and I realize it's Manhattan Island, but it's been a prison at this point for well over a decade. Now, now maybe I, I guess someone like, like, like organized this stuff, but at some point it's got to be running now. She worked for Brain. So do you think he's good at finding things? Yeah. So I think pre Brain. She didn't have that hair, but when she got with like Brain, when they and they formed a nice relationship, the two of them, they were very loyal to each other. He, she, pro- that's when her hair helped because they lived in that. Like, so they actually shot in UCLA in California, the school that John Carpenter come back where he graduated oh, and shoot library. there. Yeah, the library. But that guy has a massive, beautiful area. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, he probably has a ton of hair products in there, John. But or he's. He- the chemical compounds to make them up he could probably formulate it and romero trades hats for cassettes mm. so i bet you romero's out there trading for hair product that could be that could be happening okay mm. all right, I, I, have, I have another big question what do you think that isaac hayes the duke of new york did to become the duke of new york because everything about his character does not strike me as the tough no-nonsense guy who becomes the duke of new york all right so all right, sorry to jump in. If, he, he strikes me as someone who would be elected. So I think almost. he comes in. I think he comes in, and it's almost like, you know, how um, in Dread, how she builds up power one block at a time. I think he gets a hold of Romero really early, right? He and Romero team up. Romero, you know, maybe he saved Romero from an altercation from a, what do they call him? The crazy. Crazy. So he saves Romero somehow. Romero's like, I got your back. They take over a building, they gain a couple people. Right? They get some cars. They get some image. cars. Romero knows how to fix things. They know how to do this. And I, you know, I mean, Isaac Hayes, he knows, you know, the Duke, he knows how to work on those cars. So they, they build up one block at a time. They gain that. Then they go to get up two blocks and then they slowly start working their way through it. I mean, they're smart. They know how to, t- like, they trust Brain. You see that Duke lets Brain work. Like, he kind of lets him do his thing. So I think slowly, block by block, Romero and the Duke build their empire. So, like, see, I have an easier time imagining what they call her, Mama, in in Dread. Yeah, Mama. Yeah. I, I I have an easier time imagining her instilling uh influence. Yeah, and well, then having also it keeps work. People drugged up too, right? She's she was brutal. Killed the living daylights out of people, and then she had the well, drugs. It, but just, but just her her disposition. Yeah. I, like I see it working better. Like whereas the Isaac Hayes, I like him as the Duke, right? I love knowing he's the Duke. I love seeing him as the Duke. But when I think of his journey to the Duke, I have difficulty imagining that happening without him just getting killed. I think it's too much of a free-for-all. There are too many crazies. There are too many – not, not literally the crazies who are coming out of the sewers. There are just too many violent offenders and sociopaths when I think about the logical ascension with, with him not being a gigantic, brutal, ripping-off-the-head kind of guy – yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I have more difficulty buying his journey, even though I love him as the charismatic leader. And his twitch whenever he sees Snake. Oh, yeah. He has the eye twitch. Did you notice that? Oh, yeah. So I saw that. Was that was that more than once? Because yeah. there was one scene where I really noticed he it. He does it when Snake's around or he's annoyed by Snake. And so yeah. I, that was his idea. He, was oh, like, yeah. was, he, he mentioned that like in a commentary or someone mentioned that? Yeah. So basically Snake annoyed him so much and he knew about Snake that he got a twitch. So he, I, I really think, all right, so, all right, this is what I see. Brain has his own world, right? He's very close friends with Romero. Romero's rubbing the little feather on his hat when they're hanging out and he's shooting the that president. That was so strange. When he was doing that, I was imagining he had a small dog. Yeah, exactly. Like, so he, he seems to really inspire loyalty by letting people kind of be. He doesn't seem like a despot. Like, he seems to... You know that guy at the train station when Brain comes and the guy's like, "Well, I was told to watch the president." Like he's, he's he gives people like he's he's not ruling people. I don't think I don't think they're 
too afraid of him. I think they're loyal, but they're allowed to do what they want because they're loyal to him. So maybe, maybe he has guys that do the cruel stuff. Uh huh. And he understands. Or, the or, or maybe you let them do what they want a little bit because you know that everyone in here is a violent sociopathic criminal, mm -hmm. and if you hold too hard a hand over of them, you get stabbed when you're not looking. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So what do, you, I, I, what do you think? Is that a good explanation? Him yeah. and Romero work their way up and he trusts people enough? I That's think so. the best explanation. Ooh. I'll call it that. It's the best explanation. It, it, it's a scenario that I have difficulty with, but I couldn't imagine a better one. Hey, tomorrow you'll call me up. And be, hey, Mark. <laughs> the, you, know, the, you know, the only uh, – so this isn't him doing it though if he was just one of the first. Yeah. If he was one of the first – the next two or three people who come in, Isaac Hayes is not a small man. The next two or three people come in happen to be violent criminals, but you don't have guns, but and they're not big guys. So now he's the toughest of the four and they follow him. Well, now he has three goons. So now even if a big guy like you or I comes in, well, he has a team of four and maybe very quickly things fall in line. So if he was one of the the progenitor criminals on the island – that's actually the easiest way it is for me to follow. But that doesn't – that's not statistically probable. I like either way. But I think Romero plays a big part. He does. Yeah, and oh, you know yeah. what else? He, he has the crazy factor. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, he's he wiry too. He seems to be all around too. He's kind of infiltrated into every group. Yeah. Who? Romero. He's crazy. Yeah, but he's like kind of soft-spoken but still very menacing. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love – and Carpenter gave him free reign on set. <laughs> Just do your thing, man. <laughs> I don't want to deal with this. <laughs> like when he died, he got the, the stab scene. He's like, yeah, he made a choice. That yeah. sound he made. <laughs> Carpenter's like, yeah, he made choices. He uh, he did that. So that's fine. But uh, I liked it. Yeah, no, I dig it. Now, I have another question. You're, uh, wh which henchman would you rather be? A stormtrooper or one of these guards in New York whose helmets are just pitch black? And you're running around looking at nothing. When you storm say stormtrooper, do you mean in Star Wars? Yes, in Star a stormtrooper in Star Wars. Or one of these guards that has a helmet. Like, visibility-wise. You'd rather be a stormtrooper? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have a blaster. <laughs> Not a guard with a thing, that a visor you can't even see through? Those are I'm the actually weirdest helmets. Say, I'm actually saying those guards just because they tend to, to be a lot more successful. <laughs> but, but they have no... Like, I guess from vision standpoint, I'd rather be a stormtrooper. Because those guys have a black visor in front of... Like, that's not, <laughs> did you see the guys falling, John? Coming out of the helicopter and tripping? And Carpenter's like, there's my... There's my SWAT team falling all over the place. <laughs> I did not notice that. <laughs> I did Carp not notice that. That's what Carpenter said. He's like, there's my... He's like, and then Kurt Russell did his famous cackle, and he's like, yeah, they had no idea where they were running. I like how at the beginning of the movie, Snake just steps off a bus into this world. Yeah. He's on a... He seems nonplussed. It's, it's chill. Was he nonplussed on a bus? Not yet. Jesus, <laughs> the ways. I love... And then, I don't know. So, do, do you think he likes Hauk, played by Lee Van Cleef, John? I think he's just indifferent. Yeah. Mm. Do you, he, so, stri he strikes me as the guy who knew what he did, and he knew the he knew the sentence he was given, and he's just like, oh, I'm gonna sit on the other side of a desk and talk to this guy, and now I got a radio in so that I don't die. I think Snake likes Snake. Yeah. Snake's in for Snake. I mean, and that scene, I don't know what you guys think about this, but when he first goes into the play, watching the prisoners put on the play. And all the directors and all the cast, like the main guys were playing the instruments, mm -hmm. playing the instruments in air quotes. When he goes down there, there's those four men, like, you know, raping that woman. And he just walks is, right. He walks right past it. That is the weirdest it. scene in the whole movie for me, by the way. Yeah, because of nudity. And it's, it really goes against it. But I guess, I guess what no, it does. No, no, that, that, that Snake did nothing. Oh, do you, you think he would have done something? Well, it's not that I think that he would. It's that the movie gave me information that he wouldn't. Yeah. And, and I, if I'm going to fault the movie on something, I'm going to fault it on that. I think oh, wow. it cements in who he is, though. He stopped and he stared and he thought about it. And you saw that on screen. Mm -hmm. And then he walked away. I guess it. I guess it, it, one thing it shows and it doesn't tell, which I guess is good storytelling. But all audiences were blown away by that. They're like, why would the man not help the woman? Because he's not a good guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you're but right. But the man who's not a good guy wouldn't have stopped quietly watched, not smiled or engaged, and then walked on, in Maybe my opinion. he was that... thinking how he could spin it to his advantage. Yeah. Well, he's the only one with a gun, so he could have spun that to his advantage momentarily. He's not wasting bullets on that, is he? He doesn't have to. He's the only one on the island with a gun. Everyone knows no one else has a gun. They even say that. That's what I mean. It, 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 
that that one moment, it, it's like it's what thirty seconds of film time. Yeah, I guess from a storytelling technique, I like the showing, not telling. So I kind of like that they added it in there. I think it. 